Rand Paul of Kentucky. Good to have you on board here on the set. Thanks, Thanks for, for joining us. So, Senator, I, let, let's start. We were talking about Marco Rubio before, but uh, Marco has accused you of helping to create ISIS. Uh, it caught, caught the attention of a lot of people, some suggesting it was a desperate move. Uh, did you, quote, help create ISIS? <laughs> well, you know, the opposite is kind of true. I've been saying that one of the reasons ISIS grew is because the neoconservatives, like Rubio, wanted to push Assad back. They want to topple Assad, and that's created the space for ISIS to grow in. I think that's a legitimate foreign policy point. But to say that the bulk collection of data is somehow helping ISIS, I could equally well as argue that Rubio's gang of eight bill is allowing ISIS to attack us. It'd be equally valid and, or invalid as a point. But I think it is a valid point. We had this debate, you know, in the presidential debate about regime change. Right. And I think that is a really important debate. Is it our role in the world to decide who the leaders are in the Middle East? And have we at times toppled secular dictators that have allowed chaos, instability, and the rise of radical Islam? So, without mentioning your name, this yes. is what Marco said about you uh, on Monday. I would not only restore the intelligence programs Obama and Congress have destroyed, I will strengthen them. If ISIS had lobbyists in Washington, they would have spent millions to support the anti-intelligence law that was just passed with the help of some Republicans now running for president. When I'm president, we're not going to violate the civil liberties of Americans, but we are going to capture as many terrorists as possible. So he, he says that ISIS couldn't have had a better ally in you because of your vote, but it's kind of ironic that the same people that are endorsing him, <laughs> so proud of endorsing him, we're on your side and not his. Yeah, Trey Gowdy from South Carolina, a prominent congressman who's endorsed Rubio, voted for the NSA reform. The other thing Kelly is, Kelly Ayotte out of New Hampshire. Yeah, it, it also kind of reminds me of Rahm Emanuel a little bit in the sense that Rahm Emanuel said, let no crisis pass that we can't use it to sort of foist upon the people a new big government program. Well, the NSA reforms that were passed allowed the program to go on for six months. So through the Paris tragedy, through the Boston tragedy, through San Bernardino, we were still doing bulk collection of all the records. Two independent commissions, bipartisan commissions, have studied the issue and said that no terrorists have been stopped by this. But what I think is, is that terrorists want us to fear them. They can't defeat us on any battlefield, but they win when we are fearful. So Marco Rubio is buying into the fear. He wants you to trade your liberty for a false sense of security, and I object to that, and I think it's a really important debate to have, but I think he's on the wrong side of history, and I think if he finds that he's going to tout across the country that he is for a generalized collection of records of all Americans, I think he may be surprised that maybe most Americans don't want that. Including Trey Gowdy. Mark. In the face of Paris and San Bernardino, you have stayed by your principles regarding the balance between national security and civil liberties. Has that hurt you politically? I don't think so, really. I think uh, we've been doing quite well, actually. In fact, I think I'm on the right side of history on these arguments. If you look at Paris and you look at the tragedy and you say, could more information have stopped that? Could we allow them to collect more information? In Paris, they collect a thousandfold more information, a thousand times more intrusive. They collect everything in Paris, and they have been since Charlie Hebdo and yet still they weren't able to see this coming. I think that we need to do more to, to stop and to try to stop terrorist attacks from happening, but I don't think it's in giving up our freedoms or giving up, giving the government the ability to look at all of our records. Senator, you said yourself in a tweet yesterday, and many people have said the same of you, that you appeal to so many different constituents. You appeal to the left on civil liberties in many ways, to the right on economic liberty. Um, you've been called the most interesting man in politics by major magazines. So why do you think it is that you haven't gained more traction in this particular primary when you look at the poll numbers? I think one of the things is it's unknown. I think we're being led by the nose by polls, and there's a lot of evidence that they're not very accurate. In Kentucky, we had a race about a month ago for governor. Everybody said the Democrat was going to win by five points. The Republican won by eight. They were off 13 points in the last week. Do you think they might be off a little bit in a 12-person race months in advance? Almost every poll, and people are not reporting this, still has well over half the people undecided. So they call you on the phone, you say, oh, I haven't decided, and they say, no, but who are you leaning towards? So we have a poll of leaners, and what is a mistake is to base our news coverage on it. We're letting one person dominate all the news coverage, and the person we're letting dominate it, whether you're Republican or Democrat, will be bad for the country. I don't think he's a serious candidate, and let we've, we've let ourselves be led by the polls. 
organization is important. We have 50 to 100 people on the ground working for us in both Iowa and New Hampshire. I've raised nearly $30 million between all of my entities. We have uh, student groups on 400 college campuses. I think we need to balance our coverage with who has organization, who has a following, how passionate the following. We were in uh, Exeter last night. My crowd was nearly the same as Bill Clinton's, but Bill Clinton got all the coverage. Yeah. My crowd was just as big. A long well, way to go. Uh, along with you on this journey has been your wife, Kelly, who we should bring on over here. Uh, yes. Kelly, come on over. Who we've had on the show a few times, actually. Hi, yeah. Hi. Hey, Hi. come on in. How Watch are you? Step up there. Thank you. So what Hello. has been, wait, 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 as I, we count down to I, Iowa. I need to ask, first of all, will you ever let your husband wear the boots that Marco Rubio wore? <laughs> actually, I would. I like them. I, I thought they were. Okay. <laughs> There you yeah, go. You know, I, I actually flew up with a suit for Rand, but I forgot his shoes, so that's on jeans, that's which hilarious. he prefers. I like so, the jeans. Actually, that worked out quite well. So, Kelly, um, as we count down to Iowa, you've been on this journey for quite some time now. Mm -hmm. What have you liked the most and what have you hated the most about this process? I've actually really liked the debates. Uh, it's incredibly exciting to be there, um, especially the Reagan Library debate. I was mm. literally three feet from Rand, and I had to pinch myself through that entire experience. I mean, it's obviously an incredible venue, and um, and just being there and thinking, wow, that's Rand. That's my husband right there. You know? has, has it been tougher than you expected? better than you expected? Um, it is tough. Uh, it is tough, absolutely. Um, it, it is, but actually it's been better than I expected. I, I've enjoyed it. Um, you know, we were in New Hampshire yesterday and had a great town hall and I met a lot of people and it's a very invigorating experience. For me, the toughest thing is to sit at home and watch things on television. That's yeah. what I hate. That's when I'm usually screaming at the TV. But when I'm out and about, I, I like it, and I, I feel very privileged to get to be a part of it. Beyond the policy positions that we all know about your husband, what should the country, what should yeah. people thinking about voting in Iowa and New Hampshire know about him that we don't know? Well, I think it actually comes out in the debate. Rand is a very reasonable and thoughtful person. And oftentimes, I feel like we're reduced to sound bites. And, and as in the last debate, everyone is saying, I would do a no-fly zone. I would shoot down. You know, and Rand is always the person that says, well, what happens when you shoot down Russian planes that are already flying in that airspace? You know, he, he wants to actually connect all the dots and and look at things like cutting spending on both sides. I feel like he is the more reasonable voice in the room. Where to uh, today? We will be here for today and then we go to Iowa. I think we have to get up at 4.30 in the morning and get the 6.30 flight out of Newark. And uh, so, you know, I have my own private yeah. airline. You guys never cover it. Mine just says Southwest. Uh, <laughs> so, a that. big, beautiful plane that says Southwest. I, uh, by the way, John McCain at uh, about this time in 2008 also flying a similar type of campaign. It is so... I, it's so early. I mean, a week is a lifetime in politics. Here's the amazing thing. People have written us off because, oh, you're not doing well in the polling. We're in New Hampshire with crowds as big as any other candidate, probably bigger than half of the candidates in the race. It's not covered at all. And when you talk to people in New Hampshire, they haven't decided. Yeah. You know how they are. They want to meet you five, six, seven, ten times. Most of the race is wide open at this point, and that's the only thing I object to, and I can't do anything about it other than complain, is that we need to have the coverage more even keeled, that it is a wide open race, and every candidate has a chance. And that's why I've been saying, look, we're in all likelihood going to qualify for the next debate. All the criteria says we will at this point. But I'm not going to let anybody push me around. I'm not going to let anybody say I have a second tier campaign. With three weeks to go, it would be devastating. The networks or the parties shouldn't get to decide who's a candidate and who's not a candidate. We're on the ballot in all 50 states. We need to be treated with respect and we're going to demand it. You know, we heard the same thing from Rick Santorum yesterday. Rick was four years ago about where he is now. And he ended up winning Iowa. So. Yeah. Fair Let enough. everybody debate. Rand Paul and Kelly Paul. Thank you very thank you much. Guys. Thanks thank for you. joining us this morning. And getting the boots. I want to see them in the uh, I think they should wear them, but that's just my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> I think they'd look good.